Trust Once Lost Chapter 43 Green Onions They'd insisted on knocking me out again in order to revise my internal fixation. I'd wanted to just have a nerve block so I could watch the operation, but alas... Hey there, sleepyhead, said Applejack. I... Uh, what? I muttered. Good morning. Afternoon, actually. Applejack corrected. You woke up after the surgery, but then you fell right back to sleep. The doctor says you might not remember that, though. My breath caught a little. I, uh... I winced. I didn't say anything weird, did I? Applejack smiled. You were very sweet. What did I say? I whined. You said that if you had to have a new mom. Applejack said. You were glad it was me. Well, it could have been worse. And then you'd try to sing a song about it, but you couldn't think of a word that rhymed with apple, and you got real frustrated. Applejack giggled. You said I deserved a song. I could feel I was blushing, and I'd try to pull up the bedsheet to cover my face. I couldn't grip it. But that means that... I began to hyperventilate. I tried to grip the sheet with my left hoof. Okay, that works fine. I tried with my right, which was poking out the end of a new cast. Nothing. I couldn't even feel anything. I grabbed Applejack with my good hoof. My eyes were open so wide that they hurt a little. Applejack? I said urgently. Applejack, get the nurse right now. I can't feel my hoof. Applejack's smile vanished when she saw the urgency and fear in my eyes. Oh, I'll go get the nurse. She said, gently prying my hoof off of her. Try to stay calm. It's gonna be okay. She hurried out of the room, leaving me alone with my fears. I couldn't believe it was happening again. If I was unable to grip things, I was right back to where I started, and this time it could be permanent. I tried to take deep breaths, but my heart was pounding and my mind was racing. What if something had gone wrong with the surgery? What if I had nerve damage? I felt a wave of panic wash over me, and I could feel tears starting to form in my eyes. After what felt like a long time, Nurse Redheart rushed into the room, followed closely by Applejack. They both looked concerned as they approached my bed. What's going on, honey? Redheart asked, her voice gentle. I can't feel my hoof. I said, my voice trembling. On the operated leg? She asked, and I nodded. Yeah, and I've lost grip in that hoof as well. Redheart tested my leg, and she had a serious look on her face. <sighs> Green, I know better than to tell you not to worry, but look at me. She instructed. Just because you can't feel it now doesn't mean it's permanent. I'm going to page Dr. Stone and we'll figure this out, okay? I was being stupid. Of course, for all I knew, this could be normal. Maybe they had injected my foreleg with a local. Or it wasn't normal. It couldn't be normal. Otherwise, Red Heart wouldn't have looked so concerned. Fuck. Dr. Stone took one look at me and ordered a scan. Applejack went with me to the scan, but she had to wait outside. They whisked me back to my room rather than waiting for the results. Okay, the scan shows that all your nerves and thematic pathways are intact. Dr. Stone explained. But when you were injured, several of them were stretched or compressed. It's not something I can correct surgically, the nerves just need time to heal on their own. Once the swelling goes down, we'll have a better idea of how severe the damage is, and what level of recovery can be expected. Level of recovery? I asked. I'm going to have a permanent deficit? Dr. Stone looked at me sympathetically, for the first time breaking his monotone. It's too early to say, he said, but it's possible that you may have some degree of permanent nerve damage. We won't know for sure until your nerves have had a chance to heal, and we can assess the extent of the damage. But even if there is some permanent damage, it doesn't mean you won't be able to function normally. We'll work with you to develop strategies for coping with any deficits. Dr. Red Cross walked into my room, holding a clipboard and a small stack of papers. Good afternoon, Green. He said, his voice cheerful. How are you feeling today? I'm doing okay. I replied. My leg still hurts and my hoof is numb, but it's getting better. I'm glad to hear that, Dr. Red Cross said. Listen, I wanted to talk to you about something. I think it's important that we address your emotional well-being as well as your physical recovery. I looked at him quizzically. What do you mean? 
I asked. Well, Dr. Redcross said. I've noticed that you seem to be struggling with some anxiety and emotional distress. It's completely normal to feel overwhelmed and scared when you're dealing with a major injury like this. But I think it would be helpful for you to talk to a professional who can help you process your feelings and develop coping strategies. I looked down, feeling a sense of shame. I'm sorry. I said. I know I've been a little on edge lately. I didn't mean to be a bother. Dr. Red Cross shook his head. No, you're not a bother. He said. It's perfectly understandable to feel the way you do. And that's why I referred you to a psychologist who I think can help you. His name is Dr. Mirror Image, and he's a specialist in emotional trauma and anxiety management. He's had a lot of success in helping patients like you cope with the challenges of recovery. I looked at Dr. Red Cross, feeling my anxiety spike. Do I have to? I asked, my voice barely above a whisper. He placed a gentle hoof on my shoulder. No, Green, you don't have to do anything you don't want to. He said. But I think it would be a good idea to at least meet with him and see how you feel. I know you've had a bad experience with a therapist in the past, but Dr. Image is different. He's very patient and understanding. And I think you'll feel comfortable talking to him. I thought about it for a moment. I didn't want to see another therapist, but Dr. Red Cross was right. I had been struggling a lot lately. Maybe it would be good to talk to someone who understood. Okay. I said, finally. I'll give it a try. I'm glad. Dr. Red Cross said, smiling warmly. And don't worry. Everything you say to Dr. Mirror Image is completely confidential. He's here to help you, not to judge you or criticize you. He'll have an open mind. The room looked very similar to my first therapy visit, except there were no toys or mats on the floor. It wasn't the room that grabbed my attention, though. It was its occupant. I hadn't seen a crystal pony in person before, and they were quite striking. Dr. Mirror Image had an aquamarine crystal body with angular facets. Somehow, I could see almost straight through him. Where were his organs? His mane was a silver color tinged with gray, and he had a pair of spectacles that seemed far too small for pony eyes. Perhaps they were just reading glasses. Applejack nudged me. Ain't glad to stay here? She whispered. We made our way to the couch and sat down. Hello, said the crystal pony. My name is Mirror Image. Hi. I said. What did they tell you about me? Dr. Red Cross tells me you're a very clever filly who's going through a very difficult time. Well, it was better than the deflection I was expecting, but still frustratingly vague. I stayed silent in hopes that he would elaborate. They told me you wanted to talk through some of the feelings you've been having. He continued. It's alright if you changed your mind. I can appreciate how much stress you must be under. I took a breath, held it, and then exhaled. Do you know about what happened yesterday? I asked. With Spoiled Rich? I don't want to tell the whole story again. I know the broad strokes. I feel guilty. I explained. I feel like I was manipulating Spoiled, and I don't know if I should feel bad about that. Guilt is a normal feeling, Mirror Image replied. The fact that you feel remorse is a good thing to me. Can you tell me more about why you feel manipulative? He was validating my feelings. Did that mean he think I had something to feel guilty about, or was he just... Ugh, no way to know yet. Spoiled was out of control. I said. I could see what I needed to say in order to push her into overreacting so that she would get into trouble. And I said those things not because I meant them, but because I knew they would hurt her. And why did you feel the need to push her? She's a bully. I stated. I could see what she was trying to do to me, and I wanted to make her suffer like she did to other ponies. I wanted to prove I was better than her at her own game. And these other ponies, who are they? Pip, at the school board meeting. When he requested funding to fix the broken playground, she refused, calling him a runt. I growled. The way she speaks to her own daughter is shocking. The type of pony she is, that, that's the only sort of it, I'm sure. Would you call them your friends? Asked Mirror. Pip and Diamond. I don't know if Pip is a friend yet, but he did ask for my help. I replied. Diamond said we were friends herself and stood up to her mother for me. 
Did they ask you to do what you did? No. Well, to go that far for another pony, it sure does sound like you care a lot about Pip and Diamond. Mirror Image said. Tell me, Green, how much of what you did was planned? Did you make those decisions on impulse? I didn't do it for them. I grit my teeth. I did it because I was angry. I had a plan to go through the proper channels, but it wasn't going as fast as I wanted. When I had the opportunity to vent my frustration on some pony who deserved it, I took it. Well, seems like she's getting along with him quite well. Part of me actually thought that Green would hate him. Anywho, let's get on to our thoughtful donators. Top donators, Jesse Smith, Zar630, Badass Waffle, Only One Thing, Suru Ryan, and Calidus. Matvik, Jock, Lucy, Darkseid, Raiden, Runescythe, Will, Twinkie, Luigi, Chancellor Crust, Big Smoke, Murder Princess, Little Mighty, Solar Symphony, and many more fantastic people. Thank you all so much for watching this video and live life to the fullest.